top 20, no, not 20, that's a lot. But this was very like, you do who you wanna do, girl, and have fun doing it, which I totally agree with. Today I am here with my top 10 books of 2020. I read 140 books, so it took a while to narrow it down, but I think I finally have it solidified. The books on my list aren't necessarily 2020 releases because a lot of the time I do not have 2020 releases because I'm a cheap ass and don't like spending full price for books. So I always wait until I find the books at the thrift store. So if you do see 2020 releases on this list, it is probably because somebody so kindly gifted it to me. So thank you if you see the book that you gifted to me. I truly appreciate it. But yeah, these are just books that I personally read in 2020. So without further ado, let us get started. Coming in at number 10 is The Arrangement by Robin Harding. I loved this book. This is an adult thriller about a girl named Natalie who is an art student. She's having a lot of trouble making ends meet. So she joins a website that is basically a sugar daddy, sugar baby website and she meets a man named Gabe there and she instantly falls for him. He has a whole second life going on and he ends up breaking off the arrangement with her and she's very upset about this because she thought what they had was real. So she decides that she's going to infiltrate his life through his daughter and it's like the story of that. It is just so addictive and super fast paced. It's so much fun to read. You get perspectives from both Natalie and Gabe and the ending is not what you expect which I am a huge fan of because I hate being able to call the endings of thrillers but this one was so much fun so I definitely definitely recommend checking this one out because I feel like it's very underrated and not a lot of people have read it. Coming in at number nine is Red, White, and Royal Blue. Everybody has heard of this book. Everybody knows what it's about. I was very hesitant picking it up because I am not the biggest fan of romance books. You'll be able to tell with my other selections on my favorite list. I believe this one and one other one is like the only true romance book that I have. And that being said, the romance books that I read are all very similar. You'll be able to see when I show you the next book. But I just loved the couple in this. I loved the enemies to friends to lovers trope. Enemies to lovers and friends to lovers are two of my favorite romance tropes. They're pretty much the only romances that I vibe with. So to have an enemies to friends to lovers trope, I was here for it. I really liked it. If you haven't read this book, I definitely think you should, but you probably have because like I said, everybody has read it but it's a lot of fun. Coming in at number eight is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahern. This is the second book to the Serpent and Dove series. I think that Serpent and Dove was like my third favorite book of 2019, so it kind of just fits to have the sequel on my 2020 list, although I really loved it. Lou is one of my favorite characters in YA history, so just having another book about her was really awesome. I didn't love her as much as I loved her in the first book, but I still really enjoyed her character, and I didn't really like read that much in this book compared to the first book, which is why it's pretty low on my list. But I did really like that we got more information on the side characters in this book, because I really liked them in Serpent and Dove, so being able to see their journey as well was really awesome. And this book just honestly made me so excited for the next book in the trilogy, because I just think that it left off on such a cliffhanger and I need to know what happens next so. Coming in at number seven is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is the other romance book on my list. Personally I think it is pretty similar to the style of Red, White, and Royal Blue so I understand why I like it so much but this is an enemies to lovers romance in an office. I really loved the relationship because it reminded me of mine and my boyfriend's relationship which is kind of bad because it was enemies to lovers but we just make fun of each other a lot and just like the whole vibe of their like banter back and forth is very similar to what me and my boyfriend do so I might be a little biased but I had a lot of fun with this book. I was so late on the bandwagon picking this up which is very unfortunate for me which is honestly the case for a lot of books which you'll probably be able to see in this list. I'm also just a big fan of the like sunshine character falling for the cranky character and like them just being all lovey-dovey. I think it's so cute. So. Next on my list is a series. I'm just including the whole series because I read both of them in 2020 so it just seems fitting because I loved them both equally. But it is The Queen's Rising and The Queen's Resistance by Rebecca Ross. It's about a girl named Brianna who enters the school and it's basically like a finishing school if you will and you have to pick an expertise for 
what you're going to study for the rest of your life. When you graduate, you are supposed to find a patron who will basically like provide you with a living and she is left without a patron when she graduates. But then a stranger comes to the school and says that he will become her patron as long as she will help them put the rightful queen on the throne again and it's like the story of that. But it is a lot of fun. The mystery behind like who Brianna is, is really interesting and just trying to figure out all the puzzle pieces. This book honestly caught me by surprise because I did not think that I was going to like it as much as I did. This is one of the first fantasy books that I read for the year. I usually am not the biggest fan of fantasies but in 2020 I really decided to read more fantasies and I'm so glad I did. I'm definitely a fan now so all of my comments before when I say I'm not a fan of fantasy was a big fat lie because I absolutely love them which is evident in the list that I put together this year. I think that's the world building was really well done. I was not expecting the amount of political intrigue that was in this book but I actually really enjoyed it and I loved the cast of characters and the romance was a big highlight for me. Even though it is a bit problematic, I stan even though it's creepy. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. The story is also told in like flashbacks as well as present time. Having those flashbacks really helped put the puzzle pieces together of the whole mystery in this book, but it was a lot of fun. Definitely recommend if you haven't checked it out. This is another one that I think is pretty underrated and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. Coming in at yeah. number five is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is another one that everybody knows the premise of. It's about Mia Kavera who is going to school at the Red Church, which is a school for the assassins and she is trying to get her blade so that she can avenge the death of her family. I held off reading for so long because I was intimidated by it. There's like footnotes and stuff that I just was not wanting to even partake in, but I listened to this on audiobook which the footnotes were kind of just read like it was part of the story which really helped me digest it a lot easier. So if you're like me and are kind of scared to pick this up then definitely check out the audiobooks. It makes it a lot easier to read, but I ended up really really loving it. I think Mia is another one of my all-time favorite characters in a book. She is just so fierce and I just could not get enough of her. I'm so excited to pick up the other two books in this series, although I have not yet because they're not available in audiobook and I just don't want to deal with the footnotes. Also huge fan of Mr. Kindly, the Shadow Cat. The banter that he and Mia have is just some of my favorite banter in a book, so. Coming in at number four is the entire Ember in the Ashes series. They include an Ember in the Ashes, a Torch Against the Night, a Reaper at the Gates, and a Sky Beyond the Storm. These are all by Saba Tahir. I read them all in 2020. I binged the first three and then had to wait until the fourth one came out, but I fell in love with this story. I fell in love with these characters. The series as a whole is just so well done. Like, the character development between Laia and Helene and Elias are just some of the best. I just think that this is a super special series, and if you haven't had the opportunity to read the final book, I definitely recommend it because it is just such a great conclusion to the series. I didn't see a lot of the twists and turns coming. I was so satisfied with the ending and just loved seeing where all these characters ended up, and I'm very sad that there are no more books in the series because I want more from these characters just because I love reading about them. But yeah, definitely a very special series. Definitely recommend you guys pick it up. Now moving on to my top three, which I love these books. Not that I didn't love the other books on my top 2020 list, obviously I did, but these ones really, really stood out to me as being favorites. Coming in at number three is Where Dreams Descend. This is like a Phantom of the Opera and Moulin Rouge mashup, and I absolutely loved it. I did not think that I was going to like it as much as I did, but I am so glad that I decided to pick it up because I was a little bit hesitant. I just really loved this entire cast of characters. Kalia is, again, one of my favorite female characters. Apparently, my theme of of my 2020 top books is that they have strong female characters, but I just thought she was such a badass. She was just so fierce and just didn't give a fuck about the men that were trying to control her because she was a woman, which I vibe with, honestly. I really liked DeMarco as well. He was so intriguing to me. I also really liked Jax because he was also very intriguing to me. There was the love triangle between all three of them. No idea who I want Kalia to end up with. Honestly, she can just be a badass by herself and I'll be happy. The highlight of the book though is Eros who is Kalia's assistant. I just think that he is just a sweet little cinnamon roll and I just want to protect him at all costs. I am so excited for the second book in the series because I really just want to know what happens to these characters and where everybody ended up because you are left on such a cliffhanger and I just need to know 
more. Coming in at number two is Supernova by Marissa Meyer. This was my top book for a very long time in 2020 until I read the book that ended up being my top book, but this is the conclusion to the Renegades series. I absolutely loved Renegades, absolutely loved Arch Enemies. I'm pretty sure Arch Enemies was pretty high up in my list as well for 2019, so it's only fitting to have the finale live up to the expectations that I had for it. This was another series that I just think concluded so well. The characters of these books are definitely what shined for me. I just love every single one of them. They are just so lovable. Every single character in this series is just so well developed and so unique in their own way. They all have their own personalities which I loved and I love that Nova is a morally gray character and you never really knew where her loyalties lied. That was a big highlight of this series for me because I just loved the tense feeling of it. I am so convinced that there's going to be a spin-off series based off the epilogue which I am so here for so fingers crossed that that happens sometime in 2021 but we'll see I guess. But and yeah. now Second. the finale, the final book on my top 20 list for 2020, my number one book of the year is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller which I feel like a lot of people are going to disagree because a lot of people did not like this book and were very disappointed but I was not one of them. A lot of people describe this as like a Slytherin romance story and I definitely agree. I I just think that the book started off with such like a punch like the first line is they've never found the body of the first and only boy who broke my heart and they never will that hooks me and i was instantly invested in the story i fell in love with these characters i think that they are just so much fun and just seeing them like fight with each other was so addictive which sounds really weird i don't even know if it would like classify as like an enemies to lovers because it's also like a friends to lovers but they were never really enemies in the first place so i guess it's just a friends to lovers which i'm just rambling at this point alessandra again one of my favorite favorite female characters that I've read. She is just so cunning and just so unapologetically herself and just doesn't really give a fuck about anybody or anything except her own benefits. I also just thought she was hilarious. I was honestly rooting for her the entire time to take down that Shadow King because I was not the biggest fan of the Shadow King when we first started reading, but he definitely grew on me as the story progressed. I am a fan of him now. I think that his background was very mysterious, which definitely drew me in. I loved trying to like slowly unravel what he was all about. I was also a big fan of the female friendships in this book. They were all so great and we need more of that in YA. I also really liked how sex positive this book was because a lot of books are very preachy about that kind of stuff, but this was very like, you do who you want to do, girl, and have fun doing it, which I totally agree with. I so desperately want a sequel for this book, which I know we are probably not going to get, but I really just want to see where these two characters end up because I just love them and their relationship. I highly recommend y'all give it a chance even though there's a lot of negative reviews. It's a lot of fun, I promise. Alright everybody, so that was my top 10 books of 2020. Let me know down below your top 10 or like your top 3 if you don't want to write that much because I know a lot of typing and let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!